Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2009 American romantic comedy film called Confessions of a Shopaholic. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. The film opens with a little girl named Rebecca picking out shoes with her mother. Little Rebecca receives a sturdy pair of simple brown shoes. The older girls who try on dresses and jewelry don't need money for these perfect things. They just swipe their magic credit card. Do you think she achieved it? In the present, the adult Rebecca walks down the street with 12 credit cards in her purse. She is a writer for a gardening magazine. Rebecca is a shopaholic with a closet full of clothes and accessories and a lot of debt. Going along at this rate, one day she receives a bill for $900. At first, she thinks her credit card has been stolen but she realizes that she buys so many things that she forgets they even exist. The debt is all hers. Moreover, she becomes the number one target of the tenacious collection agent, Derek Smith. Rebecca has a best friend named Susie who tries to help her with this shopping obsession. One day, the protagonist learns of a job opening at a famous magazine called Alette. Rebecca goes to the interview and in the process, notices a beautiful green scarf. Even the mannequin comes to life and tries to convince her to buy it. Rebecca cannot help herself and tries to buy it by splitting the price in cash and with several credit cards. But in the end, one card is declined and she is still $20 short. She rushes to a hot dog vendor, skips the line for a fake emergency and begs the vendor to return her cash on a check. She even offers to buy all of his hot dogs, claiming she needs the scarf for a sick aunt. The man in the front row gives her $20 to get her out of the way and allow him to take his hot dog. She is impressed and he walks away, telling her there is a difference between cost and value. Rebecca puts on her scarf and goes to Alette's office. Once she arrives, the receptionist tells her that someone named Alicia Billington has filled the position internally. Soon after, Alicia walks by them and Rebecca falls in love with their beauty. Rebecca is about to leave, looking upset, but the receptionist compliments her scarf and tells her that a consumer finance magazine is hiring. She advises her to give it a shot and talk to the magazine manager. Rebecca rushes into the manager's office and meets Luke Brandon, the man who was in line at the hot dog stand. She tries to hide the scarf because she told Luke it was for her sick aunt. The interview gets off to a bad start when Rebecca realizes she has forgotten her CV. This is compounded by the fact that the assistant had found the scarf and returned it to Rebecca. Luke realizes she lied, but allows her to keep going. She tries to improvise, but it becomes pretty awkward nevertheless. It seems that Luke sees something interesting in her. Bex goes to her roommate and friend Susie. The girl tears up Rebecca's rent check knowing that she has enough financial problems as it is. Then, with the help of a bottle of tequila, the two go through the bills. Susie does the sums and finds that the news is terrible. Rebecca owes just over $9,000 in debt. However, the two have the bright idea of writing a sample article for Alette and sending it in. But at the same time, under the effect of alcohol, Rebecca writes a mean letter to Luke. The next day, Luke phones her and compliments the sample. She realizes that they put the letters in the wrong envelopes. So, Rebecca makes a desperate dash to intercept the insulting letter directed at Alette. Hiding in a coat rack, Rebecca manages to grab the insult-filled letter before it can be read. Later, Rebecca shows up at her new job. Luke assigns her an initial task to write an article on interest rates on loans. Rebecca has no idea what it is, but says she will do it. Susie makes Rebecca watch a video about shopping addiction and tries to get her to help her. The video says to throw away unnecessary clothes, but Beck simply hides everything in the closet. Rebecca has a rough start at work because Luke asks her to rewrite the article, as Rebecca had copied much of the material from the book Money for Dummies. Luke asks her to describe her viewpoint, and Rebecca Googles credit viewpoints. At that point, she thinks she will be fired, but not today. Luke takes her to a company meeting and has her ask the presenter instigating questions. After that, he asks her to go home 
and rewrite the article from scratch. Rebecca walks down the street and a sample cell distracts her. She can't help herself this time either and buys many clothes she doesn't need. She also discovers that they are fakes. While inspecting a newly purchased cashmere coat, she realizes that it's not 100% cashmere and that it has been duped. This gives her the idea for the column, which she immediately writes. The next day, she has Luke read the article, who is impressed. Rebecca gets the idea to write under the name, The Girl with the Green Scarf, and it is an immediate success. The debt collector continues to pursue Rebecca as well at her new job. This puts her in trouble during a business meeting. Rebecca goes to her parents for help, but it turns out that they have invested all their savings in an RV. The new column, The Girl with the Green Scarf, becomes famous among fashion magazines. At a party, the publicity manager nervously follows Rebecca and sees her talking to the company's CEO. She gives him some new ideas for the company and he is amazed. Rebecca manages to impress the bankers and even the Finns at Nokia, even though she cannot speak a single word and finish. Bail collection agent Smith keeps calling her and she tells Luke that he is an ex-boyfriend who is stalking her. Later, she and Luke share a shopping trip. He reveals to her that his mother is a wealthy socialite, but he doesn't want to depend on her for help. That evening, they stop in Miami to have fun and enjoy a drink. They share a dance together, after which they return to the hotel. The two bond, but she discovers that he has dinner plans with Alicia. The next day, she returns home and notices that Derek is waiting for her outside. She sneaks into her room where she meets Susie. Susie then discovers that Rebecca didn't actually throw out the old clothes, but hid them. Susie convinces Rebecca to join a support group for shopaholics. While the other members talk sadly about their obsession, Rebecca does nothing but describe her love for shopping. That same evening, Rebecca goes to a dinner party with some influential guests, among them the editor of Alette magazine. Rebecca has dreamed since childhood of working for that company, and this evening, she wants to go and talk to the editor about a job position. On the way, Alicia stops her and points out that her dress is untied. Rebecca goes towards the bathroom, but accidentally ruins the clothing, and the beads fall on the floor. This causes her to fall on an older lady. At this point, Rebecca's dress is similar to that of a maid. In fact, she is mistaken for a maid and has to serve a dish a fish to the guest. Rebecca makes a mess, but Luke gets up and helps her serve. The evening then takes a better turn when he goes out to the balcony with her and confesses his love to her. The next day on her way to work, she meets Derek Smith. He enters the elevator and Rebecca calls him to confirm that it was him. When he calls back, Rebecca's phone rings. She escapes to Luke's office, saying her ex was following her. Finally, security stops Derek. Rebecca's work is so appreciated that she gets a TV spot with Luke and Alette takes her shopping. While Rebecca tries on clothes, Alicia holds her purse and answers a call from Smith, thus discovering Rebecca's debt problems. Even though it costs a month's salary, the protagonist buys the dress and heads off to her bridesmaid dress fitting since Susie is getting married. Susie notices Rebecca's shopping bag and sends her back to the support group. Rebecca meets a new woman who comes to the support group and asks her to store her shopping in the trunk. The woman agrees, but it turns out that she is the new leader of the group, Miss Cork. The new leader takes the group to a thrift store and has Rebecca deliver the purchases. Later, Rebecca returns to repurchase them, but she only has enough money for one. So she chooses the dress to go on television. The show is going well, and the audience is allowed to ask questions. Derek stands up and exposes Rebecca's debt problems and the lie about being an ex-boyfriend. He reveals more of Rebecca's lies, and this dramatically disappoints Luke. Rebecca returns to the apartment and meets Susie. As they talk, a homeless woman walks by, wearing Beck's bridesmaid dress. Susie is furious and leaves. Rebecca's parents drive up and offer to sell the RV, but she will not let them. Alette goes to Rebecca's family and offers her to work for Alette, but this involves writing about things that are not true. 
and Rebecca refuses. She returns to her support group, asks for help, and organizes a sample sale and auction of her entire wardrobe. She sends a notice to Alette's original receptionist, who forwards it to all the assistants, including Haley, Luke's assistant. Everything is sold, and the last item for sale is the original green scarf. Two women have a small bidding war, and eventually, Rebecca gives it up to the winner, telling her not to wear it with yellow. In the audience, Haley sits next to Rebecca's mother, who reveals that she rejected Alette's bid. Meanwhile, Luke is in danger of losing his job for leaving Rebecca in the company. But the CEO surprises him by offering to start a new magazine. She earned $16,000 through the auction, returning to Rebecca, allowing her to pay off her debt. Thus, she brings $9,000 to Smith's office in exchange. Rebecca shows up at Susie's wedding wearing her bridesmaid dress, which she bartered for other clothes from the homeless woman. Susie forgives her, and as the bride and groom walk away, Rebecca wanders the street. The dummies call her again, but she resists temptation, and they begin to applaud her. She continues walking and finds Luke in front of her. He gives her the green scarf, revealing that he paid the two girls to fight for the scarf. Finally, the two kiss on the street. Like and subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.